Hey guys, what's going on today? Today I've got a question, well... Hey guys, what is going on today? Today I've got a new little topic and project we're going to be working on here today. Uh, as you can see, it's my 2009 370Z here. And a lot of you guys, and I mean a lot of you guys, um, have been asking, will you do a video on uh, removing the squirrel marks using the polished compound DA polisher that I have. I have a Griot's Garage DA polisher, and you use like the Meguiar's Paul Ultimate Polish and Ultimate Compound. So, first off, let me go ahead and say it is windy outside, so I don't know why. It's not really, it's just a light breeze, but in the camera, you might hear it the entire time. All I'm going to do though is I'm showing you the outside. I'm going to show you the swirl marks really quick that I've gotten in here in the last year or so. And then I'm going to be pulling it in the garage because even though it is a perfectly warm day here today, it's like 78 degrees, nice breeze. I like doing it inside the garage where I'm at least in the shade, especially when it's going to take so long. So guys, let me go ahead and zoom in here with the camera. And then what we'll do is I'll try my very best. Remember, I am not a pro detailer. I am an enthusiast, a hobbyist at best. Uh, I work for UPS, as you guys know. As you see, we easily got off. We just came off a cruise, and I'm going to show you the best I possibly can uh, how I actually get the swirls out of the car and stuff like that, and the light scratches. So, I like I said, I'm no pro. If you are looking for some great pros, there's some amazing ones out there. The Ammo NYC, they have a great video channel. Uh, Auto Geek, I love Auto Geek. They're here in Florida. He does a great job. Mike Phillips still down there. Uh, there's the junk man. I've seen a lot of his videos. He is the pro. We're talking about those guys are absolute pros out there to do amazing work. So if you're really looking for some great in-depth camera footage and uh, showing you perfectly how it's done, look at those guys. I'm just the average Joe, and I want to show you the best I possibly can on my own car. So if you, you want to see this kind of stuff, hang in there, stand by, and I'll show it to you. And uh, I hope you enjoy. It's all I can say because I'm gonna, uh, I don't have all the pro stuff. So bear with me. Here we go. Let me zoom in here on the car and uh, show you some stuff. Sorry about that. All right, let me try and get at some angles where you're actually going to be able to see some stuff. Of course, I'm trying to do this on a sunny day. That's why I'm trying to come out here now. Okay, I'll get out back here in the back area. Can you see the light swirls through here? Just light. I mean, they're not major, but can you see it in the light? I can see sun right there. All right, can you see all this? My plan is to always show how good I possibly can. I'm trying to get it at the sun at some good levels, but you can see some light swirls all through here. Let's see if we can show any on the roof. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and get in the sun. Can you see it now? The rings. Does that show you really good? All right, so my car actually has some light swirls in it. I mean, it's just from the use. It's been a little over a year now since I've actually had to do this. Like you can see now, it's big time here. Got a little bit of overspray, I can tell from that Eagle One detailer. That's no big deal, that'll come out real quick. But I hope you're actually seeing this stuff real quick. I have some light swirls, like I said, in here. And I'm gonna do my best to show you how I'm gonna get them out today. Uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. So give me a second here, I'm gonna pull the car right back in the garage here where I'm turning the lights on, open up the windows and doors. And now we can get a nice little breeze through here. And I'll pop out the DA polisher and go from there. So hopefully these are showing up here as I slowly make my way across the hood. And, uh, all right, guys, stand by. Let's go ahead and uh, show you what we can do. All right, guys, welcome back. We're obviously in my garage right now. I'll go ahead and stand to the side so it's a little bit easier for you to view. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to use in here to go ahead and uh, take care of this light swirls in my car. Uh, what I'm first going to show you here, as I have it behind me on the table here, thing behind me, is the first off, the main thing is the Griot's Garage 6 inch random, or random orbital. Duh, speak English today. And uh, it's great, you know, for especially like the newer guys and uh, you guys out there, you don't want that direct drive that it'll just keep on grinding in the paint, stuff like that. That will kind of mess you up pretty bad. And this right here, if you put too much pressure on it, it'll actually stop moving. So it is uh, perfect for the beginners out there. So if you guys are looking for this kind of thing, this is great. A lot of the big guys use it. I mean, once you get to the pro level, those guys that can actually uh, deal with it and know the pressure and stuff, that's totally fine. You get a regular direct drive, like flex or something like that, or the silo, but you know, for the beginner guy, the average just hobby enthusiast, a DA polisher uh, from Griot's here, it's a perfect thing. I want to say these are about $130, $140. I got it with a full set of uh, Griot's polishes, waxes, uh, all that stuff. And I think I got it from Auto Geek. It came with a whole package set for somewhere around $170, $180. So that's a good deal right there for everything. It came with literally four or five things, pads, the whole nine yards. All right, the next thing, let me go ahead and put this down. Don't want it to fall off here. 
The next thing I'm going to be using here, of course, is the, we'll go ahead and do the Meguiar's Ultimate Polish, Ultimate Compound. What they always recommend to do is you always start out with a small section with a polish, and if it takes out your swirl marks, then you don't need to use the compound. But then if you do need to, then obviously just go upgrade from there, so, and go to use the compound if you're still having some uh, light scratches and stuff in there. But it's always recommended to go in a small section with the polish first, just basically do a test section. All right, the final thing I'll be using today, obviously, is some Greer's Garage 6-inch orange foam pads. I got a set of three of them, it was like 15 or 20 bucks, something like that for all three of them. I don't know how much it was, honestly. It's been a little while since I bought these, but uh, there we go. There's three of them, more than enough to last you for uh, a year or so, the way this is, so. No big deal if you're gonna spend it for the one time here. As you see, we're in the garage here. It's a lot cooler in the garage. Like I said, I'm gonna open the door here and just relax. So let me go ahead and start uh, prepping this up. I'm going to try and do my best here and I'll show you everything I can. I'll put a blue tape line down the thing. That way we can easily see the before and after and do the best I possibly can. Then we'll, after we do that one section, I'm just going to roll it out there in the sun and do my best to possibly show you. The sun is going in and out as it's kind of cloudy today and uh, see if uh, any results can go from there. So, and then obviously it's not too hard after that. You know how to apply to the rest of the car. So. Let me go ahead and uh, prep up everything, and then uh, we'll come right back, so stay tuned. Alright guys, here we go, we're getting all set up here. One thing I wanted to make abundantly clear beforehand, uh, if you guys saw my Eagle One, uh, whatever it's called, the mitt review for the actual clay bar, and the car has been clay barred already, make sure you guys are doing that before you're going to do any of this stuff. You want to make sure the paint is properly ready to go. Uh, I'm getting ready to put a sealant on here. You're going to see the turtle wax uh, sealant that they gave me, that they sent me. I'm going to be doing that after I get done with this. And then, uh, um, you know, I want to get ready for the wax of the final top coat. So all I'm going to be doing is getting ready. And that's where I'm at right now. So it's been washed. It's already been clayed with the nano, the not nano skin, but the Eagle One prep mitt. And uh, that's why we're at this section now. So there you go. All right, I'll let you see everything, how it's going right now. Everything's on. Brand new pad. One of the things with the brand new pads you need to remember is that it's dry and you do not want to be getting any junk in there, okay? So the one thing you got to make sure you're doing here is you want to prep that pad, okay? So I'm just going to start with the polish like uh, it's always recommended. Go ahead and get it all straightened up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically prep it. So I want to get it basically, just get a nice little uh, set of, uh, what's it called? The polish in there, I'm just going to rub it in real quick. I know it's a little bit much, but you're going to actually see that I'm going to rub it in here real quick and get it in there. Because you don't want this stuff grinding on a dry pad. So I'm just gonna use it like butter, spread it all out through there. I don't know if you can see this in the video. There's always that certain smell of polishing compound you can easily smell. You can see it's a little bit dry still on the ends, but there you go, we're just prepping that pad, we're making sure it gets ready for it. You can even spray, I've seen it spray with detailers and stuff like that, just so that you don't want that harsh, soft, or the hard disc just cut into there. You want to make sure it's uh, got a little bit of a lubrication, you know what I mean, to start it up. You don't want to be just grinding into that paint. So there we go. I mean, I just want, like I said, I'm just making it sure we're ready to go here. All right, guys, so you realize what I'm going to do here. Just want to put a couple uh, dime size things in there. You don't need much to get this working. So let's get it going on here first. Now, I'll show you Griot's Garage likes to do it this way. I've seen people that do the dime technique. There's all kinds of different ways. Figure out what's best for you and go, okay? One of the biggest things you do, I made sure I bought the longer version of the, extent of the cord that comes with it, so you don't have that extension cord. When you're doing this, put it over your shoulder, guys, shoulder like this. You see how I mean? You don't want that cord to be dragging here against the paint, okay? It's one of the biggest things in the world. One of the things you can do is you, you start out at a lower speed, like a one or two here, and we're gonna just spread it out through there and just get it on there good and then we'll crank it up to about a four or something like that and four to five and then uh, we'll really start working in. You want to do a cross hatch pattern so I'm going to point up, down, up, down and back forth like this, okay? That way you want to get it in there, do it maybe five, six times, something like that and then uh, turn it off. Obviously when it's, when it's going off, turn it off while it's still in the paint. You do not want to take All right, guys, sorry about that uh, battery cut out right in the middle, so I had to switch to my other battery. But you can see right here, I already have the uh, cross pattern. I've seen the dime pattern. You just put the three dots here on the side. Either way, figure out what works best for you. Just make sure that uh, when you turn it on or off, make sure you're actually against the paint. Because like I said, you do not want this stuff slinging everywhere, okay? You bring it back up. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it down to about a one and a half right now. You can see the different digits. 
And just because we're going to spread it out first, and then we're going to slowly crank it up here to four or five, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and prep back up again. Obviously, back over my shoulder. I'm down here on the paint. So now I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on. Just get a nice little spread it out real quick. Absolutely kill me. You know, you're just like, delete comment, but yeah, there's always somebody that says that. Clearly I know, but I'm trying to show you guys, so bear with me here. So let's go, we got that done. I have uh, one of my nice little stuff here. We'll go ahead and get it done. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Ooh, she's starting to spark a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually, because I don't have one of those nice little fancy lights like a break from light and I live in Florida, all I gotta do is back the car out and actually uh, see if there's any difference, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna back the car out. Next time you're gonna see when we cut, we're gonna cut back and then I'm actually trying to show you the, the car and we're gonna inspect the paint, see if we actually need to do another level of just polish or do we need to go a little bit harder and drop up to a, jump up to a compound and just go ahead and really try and get in here. So. Let me go ahead and uh, back the car out and we'll see what happens from there. So stand by. Alright guys, we're back outside. I'm not going to bother trying to be in front of the camera. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get at different levels here and actually see if I see any of the swirl marks still. I mean, I see one or two really left. And the little spray over is just basically a lot of the leftover stuff. So don't bother about that. Just seeing... Uh, Looking with it, same time you are I'm trying to do this without my sunglasses because it's, it's bright outside today. Look at that. Do you see this? Swirls are gone. I'm looking everywhere. I might see one or two left. I might make one more pass here with the just the polish. But this right here tells me alone that I'm only going to need a polish today. I do not need the full compound because the paint's in pretty decent condition already. So as you can see, we're going all over the place. We're looking, we're looking. We're looking, like I said, you can see that we're in the clouds. But damn, that looks a lot better, doesn't it, guys? Let's we'll see if I can get a regular part of the car that has not been touched yet. All right, you can see some swirls through here. Can you see them right on the edge of the fender? Then we jump up to here. I don't see any swirls anymore. I see a little loose hair one or there way up here in the corner, but I'm going back and forth here. I'm really trying to do the best to show you. I definitely see them on the fender a little bit, so obviously we'll be doing some work through here. But there you go. So all I'm going to need is maybe one more light pass here with the polisher. We should be generally good to go. So uh, this is literally how easy this is. Do not let it intimidate you guys. Um, you can have some of the roughest paint and just go from there. You always start, start from the polish, work your way down. So I'm going to make one more pass here, and then I'm going to go ahead and start working on my own in the garage because it will take a while to do this. This is something you can do. You generally get away with about once a year if you do it right the first time and you use proper uh, techniques for your stuff. And you shouldn't have any problems after that. So I hope this is helping everybody out. I know the video is going to be a lot longer, but you guys tend to like these things. So there you go. All right, guys, let me go ahead and pull it in. We'll do one more polishing set. And then uh, pull it. We should be good to go after that. So uh, stay tuned. 
All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna do just a little thing again. Like I said, just gonna to touch it off a little bit. So it's not gonna to need too much. I'll just do the dime technique for you this time. You just wanna kinda of spread out a little bit of dime dots. And that's generally about it. So that's one of the other ways that you're gonna see a lot of the pro detailers do it. They'll just do a little dime marks. And that's generally it. Remember, as always, cord over the shoulder. That's the biggest thing. I've, you'll see people actually do it in the videos on YouTube. Not lying here, this is how funny it looks. Cords down here. You're, you're trying to get out the swirl marks and you're damn well putting swirl marks back in. It's like, whatever. So let me go ahead and start up, remember? We're gonna spread it out first. I'm gonna go down here at about one and a half, two. And then we're just gonna spread it. Once over, remember the cross edge pattern? Back, forth, back, forth, and just come back this way. Because you wanna keep overlapping. Do it about six times, usually is good enough. Pull it off, clean it off, and then see what you got. So once again, I'm down on the paint. All right, guys, here we are. We're back outside, obviously. We're out in the sun. Let's go ahead and pull back the tape, and let's see if we, see, so we can see some before and afters. Then crumble that junk up and get it out of here. Let's go ahead and clean up any of that leftover junk. You can see I got a little bit of overspray on it, so no big deal. There you go. Think about that. Bear with me, obviously. You can see a little bit of the overspray. Can you see this now, guys? Can you see it? There, it's clear as day. This is where the tape was, remember? You can see the line from a little bit over, just don't worry about that. Can you see the swirl marks all through here? You see the arcs? Come back to here, it's all gone. Look at this, I know this is what you guys want. This is what you guys have been asking for forever. Now the sun goes away, go figure. But that was plain as day. If the sun comes back out, I will show you again, but that is as plain as day and the easiest way I can show it to you right there. Not, it's already been done, has not been done, and you could easily see it all when the sun was up. So, apologize for sun going back out. It's typical Florida, in and out, in and out, in and out. So, there you go, guys. I hope that's what you actually wanted to see. I hope you like it. I'm gonna go over the car one more time. Okay, sun might be coming back up again. Yeah, can you see it now? Can you see the light swirls all through here? Sun's kind of trying to peek it out, and then up here there's nothing. No swirls. Swirls. Damn the, damn the stupid clouds. All right, guys. There we go. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish up the car. But I hope you really like this video. Uh, like I said, I'm no pro. There's some good pros out there that are going to show you some amazing technique. Have the great camera angles for it and stuff. And uh, But I'm just your average Joe that does this as a hobby and shows you that anybody can do it. Just don't put loads of pressure down. Don't grind into it. The machine will knock out the work for you. So thank you very much for watching. I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of the car. Maybe show you some of the some maybe side by side, some more side by sides at the end here. But I hope you guys liked it. Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up for doing this and getting on camera for you guys again. Uh, please subscribe. Ask any questions you want, and uh, we'll go from there. So let me go ahead and finish up some more of the car. Like I said, I might probably do a little bit more half and halves later on down the car. Maybe the roof at the side panels or something like that. So. Bear with me guys. You can see the sun's trying to come back out. Maybe I'll give you one last look. See some light swirl marks all through here and then over here is nothing. So there you go. Wouldn't you know a cloud comes in. So all right guys. What's going on guys? Alright, I know everybody loves the side by side, so let's do a real quick side by side here again. I just did it on the side. I've went over it twice with the polish and stuff. Remember this I was really, really swirled out, but look at it now. Are you seeing this what I'm seeing in the sun? Let me do this pull down the tape real quick before the sun goes away. Let's see if it'll see anything here. Such a hard angle to see it at, but let me tell you, it's been uh, done. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. I'm at a good angle now. Can you see this now? Can you see all the swirl marks here? Remember, the, you can see the tape line right there. Look over here. Remember, this is only polish, not compound. Can you see them now? It is such a hard pain in the butt sometimes to show swirl marks. So I really hope this is showing up. But I know you guys love a good 50-50 side by side. Look at that. You can see it all through here and stuff. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I definitely can. I'm looking where the sun is now. And back. Look at that. That's just with polish alone. Imagine came back. Woo! It's time consuming, but when it's done right, damn the car will look great. So yeah, I mean, I see one or two little fine lines left, but uh, overall looking hot. I mean, you could easily see what the tape was. Easily right there. Damn. Look as I go down. I really pray that this uh, camera is showing it all right. 
There we go. All right, guys, let me get back to doing it. I figured you'd love that little bit of 50 50 action there. Uh, let me get back to it. All right, guys, hope you're liking that. Make sure you give me a thumbs up for all this stuff. I am sweating. It is hot here. We are in the 80s in Central Florida finally again. So uh, this is suntan weather. So stay tuned. Oh, girlfriend, the swirls are disappearing. I had to, uh, I went over it, like I said, one more time, and look at that. Mmm, girlfriend, they looking good. Thank God I got rid of that bird poop stain I had on there. Pissed me off, man. Look at that. Look at them apples in the sun. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's getting there, girlfriend. It's getting there. See what I mean? See what I mean. You guys are digging this. Oh yeah, sorry about the car engine being on. I just, you know, I told you, I just keep playing the game, driving it in and out, in and out. Look at that. I mean, look at that. Hot damn. We are getting there, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting there. It is almost complete. So, like I said, hella time consuming, especially if you're anal and you make want to make sure every little last thing is out. But, um, you know, it's gonna, it's doing a great job. And then once you toss the wax on, like I said, you, you're gonna be looking hot and spiffy. All right, guys, I figured I'd show you one last uh, thing. Like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, wrap up the car tomorrow and then show you some final results tomorrow and we'll be done with it. And then I put the sealant on, I'm gonna use turtle wax sealant and then the, whatchamacallit, throw a wax on top of the top coat. So, there you go. All right, guys, have fun. I'll see you tomorrow. Mmm, so good. All right, guys, here we're, we got the pad prepped up. Remember, spread it out like a good butter on the sheet. Obviously, I'll go ahead and kick it back here over my shoulder. Now, I'm gonna just work this small section right here because that's gonna be more of a pain in the ass, and I'll do it uh, separately because a lot of times you'll get, you'll get the flat sections, but the curves and stuff, it's literally driving nuts because this is where the swirls will stay, and this will all be clean on both sides. So you really gotta get in there and go back and forth sometimes a little bit, a few times. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it down there between about one and a half right here. Like you see, just because I want to spread it out like usual. One of the good things is you can do this right here. Kind of give it a basic, you know, get it in there really good. I didn't show this in the last video. Uh, when I start working on the first day, you can do that for you. And then obviously, as you spread it, you don't have to worry about going super slow. You just want to kind of get it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it in there as best I can. Sorry, I got some stuff starting to hit on, hit on my way. I didn't want to have it flinging everywhere. Now I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up. I've been looking about five to six, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna try and keep this as slow as I can, try and do it properly so that you can see it. Remember, you don't want to go thousand miles an hour through here because you'll never actually get the cutting power you need. And at the same time, you don't want to be sitting there grinding in. You don't need to just light pressure onto it. You know, a decent amount of pressure. I think it's like around 10 pounds of pressure is good enough, so. Get it kicked out a lot more. Slowly come So you don't have to worry if you don't get this off right away, because like I said, you can use spray wax for that. Just gonna kind of easy wipe it down. Like down here, I'll I'll probably have to use a spray wax for it. Poor girl, I don't know what happened. It was before it came to me, it had a nice little gouge right there in the paint. That sucks. I mean, like I said, I, I did buy this car used in uh, January of 2013, and it had 39,000 original miles, which is a little high for its age. But it's still 39,000 next to nothing, especially on a 100% Japanese car. Because, you know, today's society, almost all the Japanese brands are still are made over here now. They don't even have uh, Japanese video, uh, Japanese cars there anymore. And this is still, just like my Honda Preludes are still 100% made in Japan. They weren't uh, made here in America, so I don't know what it is, but I just think a lot of American workers are really lazy and they don't want to do any work. All right, guys, here we go. We're back. I have the flashlight in my hand. You can see it right click here. I have another one down there as well. 
Uh, like I said, the guy's right next door to right now, so it's kind of loud. This is what I was going to tell you to do right here. So what you do is you come at it like this, look into where the light is actually hitting the car, and then you just slowly go up and down. Like I can see there's a still a one or two fine scratches left here. There's one up in there. You can kind of work your way down. This is one of those little cheats that you can use, as it were, life hacks. But uh, overall, the bumper looks really, really good. I'm slowly, slowly inspecting it right now. You see, you definitely see that scratch there. Poor girl, it's gouged pretty good. There's no way it's gonna get it come out. But yeah, you look into the light right there. Okay, there's a little bit of it stuff there, but I only stopped about right here, so that should be still there. Can you see the scratches now? Now that I'm hitting areas that haven't been touched yet, can you see them in there right there? So then you work your way back over here. See the difference now? There's no scratch. No scratches at all, no swirls. But then if I come over here where I haven't touched it yet, there you go. God damn, bitch needs to go fucking away. As soon as I decide to wash my car and details my other cars. So you can still see the scratches on this side that I have yet to touch. So this is one of those little tricks that will work for you. They do make a, a swirl light, but I mean, you can just use a regular LED light. These are a couple dollars at Walmart max. And you will be able to see your swirls without having to have the bright sun. One of those little tips you can have, look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Just beautiful. All right, guys, here we go. Everything has been done. It is still the day before. I'm gonna actually show it to you because it's still cloudy. I just finished up the back bumper, and then I use a spray wax to clear off the all the dust from the compound dust and all that stuff. You know that it flies out. So the car's all been cleaned up. So tomorrow I'll roll it out in this. If we have sun, we're crossing our fingers here. I'm actually gonna be rolling it out there in the sun, and we'll go over it, and uh, I'll show you that I'd say about 95% or more of the swirls are gone. You might have the little hairline things once in a while, but you know, I'm not gonna kill myself to get every last little tiny one out. I did the best I possibly could, and I just, I don't really have uh, the patience to keep going anymore. But anyways, it's good enough for me because I know the wax and everything, it's gonna fill in those last little lines once in a while. And literally, they're, they're almost all gone anyways. So, I wanted to show you something I actually picked up today when I went out to Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, I picked up a brand new uh, mitt, because remember, we're going to try and prevent putting swirls in there. Remember how I put, showed you in the car wash video that um, I always switch these out. They always recommend every six months to a year you need to switch them out. Well, obviously, as now that it's been polished and everything, this is kind of my thing to tell me that I need to go ahead and uh, get new mitts and stuff like that. So I went ahead and bought a brand new Grails Garage mitt. I want to say it was, like I said, around $10 or $12. I, God, I can't remember anymore. Uh, I got the Absorber here, the Absorber Extra Large. A lot of times, I remember I told you I use these on... Um, the side panels and stuff like that when um, uh, this thing is uh, too big, you know, the Grills Garage towel, it's too big, so I use the actual uh, absorber. And these things, I've used them for uh, since the mid-90s when I started driving when I was a teenager. So these things are amazing. You can wash them and everything, get them all cleaned up. Great pickup here at $12 and change. Uh, and then, of course, I just washed, got done washing my Grills Garage, the big towel that I showed you guys in the wash video. That has also been washed now and it is ready to glow. I don't want anything in my stuff that would contaminate it and that would uh, bring up junk that would actually put more swirls into the car. Um, you only usually have to polish and compound your car once a year if you do it right and you take care of your car. And that's what I want to do. I always try and make everything last a year. Uh, last thing I should show you guys is make sure, make sure, make sure you clean off your uh, polishing pads. You know, I got little snacks and stuff up here. This is my little work table. I just got done using it. I washed it in the sink, warm water, and uh, you can use some soap for it or whatever. They do have proper uh, stuff for it, but it's no big deal. I just used soap and it came right out. Here's the other ones I used. They're already cleaned up and dried. So you can see, you can go ahead and clean these things off all the time. So you can make them last for a while, a couple uses before they finally uh, start to go. But as you can see, the car is, I mean, it is ready to go. It is ready to get out there, but as you can see, it is super, super cloudy out there right now. It is breezy. Um, I was talking to my friends up there in North Florida in the Panhandle where I came from, and they were only in the low 40s today, and we're 70 degrees in the same state, same exact state. Here, I'll let you see outside real quick. See what I mean? It's it's just all cloud cover and stuff. So there's it's there's no way you're gonna tell if there's swirls or not. So other than what I showed you a little bit in the, with the flashlight. But uh, there you go. What I'll do, like I said, tomorrow we're gonna see it all. I know the video is a lot longer, but man, the car is absolutely looking spectacular. It is ready to go for you guys. 
all cleaned up. Like I said, I used the wax stuff of the McGrill's Garage spray on wax to clean off all the little dust particles and stuff. And then uh, after I show you the results, I'm going to actually do the turtle wax ice sealant that Ken Baker up there at Turtle Wax sent me. And then we're going to do the final coat of wax from Eagle One's wax that there they sent me that I told them that I would get to for a proper, like, you know, I want to put the sealant on and then I want to top coat it and make it really pop with the wax. So that's my plans. Uh, obviously, you guys have to be sure you're subscribed to see all this stuff, and uh, I hope you really enjoy. These videos are a lot longer, but they're a lot more in detail, and that's what you guys have been wanting. So, there you go. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later. All right, guys, what's going on? I think it's time to wrap this up. Finally, we have a beautifully sunny day here on Sunday, and uh, it's really peaceful out here, so I figured I'd go ahead and pull it out real quick and show it to you because I plan next to go ahead and uh, take the turtle wax sealant the Ken Baker up there, Turtle Wax sent me, and uh, go ahead and seal the whole paint off, and I'm gonna go ahead and use some wax to the very end. But I wanted to show you what it looks like now with, I, I'm not gonna lie, there's not every single squirrel out because I'd be a BOCD and doing it for hours on end. But I'd say a good 95% of these squirrels are out of the paint right now. And I'm gonna get in here and show you here in a second. So you might see a stray uh, hair one going this way or that way, but um, don't get on me too bad about it, but uh, I'd say 95% of them are all gone. And uh, the rest is just going to be filled in probably with the waxes because that means they're, some of them are pretty deep. So there you go. I hope you guys really like the way I showed you to the video and the process and stuff like that. Um, when I started out in the front, it looked like I was doing it really fast, so I apologize. And when I showed the back end of the bumper, when I showed that part, I did it at a better speed that you should be doing it at. Remember, anywhere about six times over the same area is okay. Always make sure you're doing that cross hatch pattern up and down, then up and down. Like you do one pass going down, then one pass going up, that's two, then back to three, that kind of thing. It's really easy, it's not really hard, that hard to do. And uh, you just have to go and inspect. You can use little LED flashlights if you're in the garage or whatever. And if not, you can go ahead and um, you can pull it out here in the sun like I do. But like you saw, how I've, it's been really cloudy here the last couple days, I haven't had any chance. So there you go. Look at all the hawks and stuff. There's some big old hawks up there. Anyways, I figured, uh, let's go ahead and show it to you. Let's go ahead and wrap up the video because I know that's what everybody wants to see. And uh, there you go. So make sure, just as long as you know that even as a hobbyist or a beginner, you can do every bit of this yourself. You don't need to pay anybody to do it. You pay that one-time fee for that DA polisher, and it's going to last you probably 15 or 20 years. It's not like the thing's made of junk. So as long as you take care of it, it's going to last you versus paint, taking it into a, a detailing place and letting them do it for you. So. These are what's cool about my channel. I'm going to show you what you can do easily and uh, you don't have to struggle for. So let me go ahead and grab the camera and then what we'll do is uh, I'll zoom in here and uh, show you some of the stuff around it. And uh, as we listen to the hawk, and there is an old school Supra coming down the road right now. Pretty sweet. But um, here we go. Let's go. All right, guys. Here we go. I've got the camera in my hand. I got it off the tripod. Let's go ahead and show you some of the results real quick. Guys, here we are on the front. Can you see that? I'm looking right where the sun is. Look all the way around the sun because the sun's going to give away those swirl marks. See what I mean? These are things that you can do on your own in your own garage or driveway on your own. Look at that. You might have the stray here once in a while. I can see it. But for the most part, they're all gone. Let's see if I can. Let's get to a better area because the problem is you got to play with the sun. All right. Can you see this now? I hope you can see it. Man, those uh, hawks are going crazy right now. See what I mean? These are things you can easily, easily do on your own. Look at that. I'm walking down the whole length of the car. I'm looking right either here. There's, it looks like there's two suns in my sunglasses. Look at that. Like I said, these are things that you, I know you guys can do here. It won't give you any pr trouble at all. Let's try and get some more sun angle on it. Somewhere. I gotta find some sun. Because it's right around noon right now. I had to get out here while I had the chance. Let's see if I can find something. Still got a little bit of dust on there, it looks like. There you go, see? I'm looking right through here somewhere. See, what did I tell you? You can get all the swirls out, even almost all of them, let's just say, without really having to struggle. Time consuming? Hell yeah. To make sure you're doing it right? Hell yeah, it's going to take a while. But you can easily do this. See what I mean? Some of the areas, I'm not going to lie, I had to go through it three times. But that's just to make sure that I had got all the goop off it. Let's get back to the hood a little bit. 
Look at that, guys. I know this is what you want. That's what you want. And I guess the planes are in the, the southerly route coming in today, as you can see. So there you go. What do you guys think about this? Like I said, anybody can do this. Don't let it intimidate you. I was a little bit, there you go, there's the sun right there. I was a little bit intimidated at first, but um, you know, other than that, once you get through it the first time and don't be scared of it, it's kind of like riding my motorcycle over there. Once you get through it one or two times, you really start to see what you can and what you cannot do, and you can uh, easily, easily do it yourself. So there you go. What do you guys think? Do you guys like this? I got, like I said, I'd say anywhere from about 95% of the squirrels out in some areas are 100% cleared out. And uh, I tried to show you the best I possibly could. Remember, just go slow and take your time. You don't have to rush it. Um, just take your time and it'll look great. Now, this looks great and it doesn't even have the wax on it yet or sealant. So you can imagine how good it is because getting the squirrels and stuff out is going to make your paint just scream. Look at that in the sun. Mm. Let's get it a better angle. All right. So there you go. Anyway, I figured I would go ahead and uh, show this to you. Please tell me what you guys think about it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave me some questions. If you want to see some, like I said, pros do it. I watch a lot Auto Geek a lot of the times. I try to show you, share you as many tips as I could. Look at the shine. And remember, uh, I didn't put any wax on this. I haven't put any sealant on it. It's just been polished. Look at the reflectivity. This is great. Now imagine what it's going to be like when it does have that stuff on there. Well, there you go, guys. I really hope you appreciate this video. I know it took a long time for me to get it out here. I actually started on this like Tuesday or Wednesday, and here it is Sunday. But with the, the cloudy skies, I know you would never, ever see the swirls. And be like, oh, it's great. Well, I want to show you the best I possibly can. Because I know there is still one or two swirls left in the paint that I didn't get out. Okay? But uh, for the most part, they are all done, and any beginner hobbyist can do this on their own. So I really hope you appreciate it. I took the time to do it. Please give me that huge thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want. Ask any questions you want. And then uh, I'll be glad to help you out in any way I can. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, it's time to start prepping up for that uh, Turtle Wax Ice Sealant that they sent me. All right, guys, take care. I will see you guys in the very next video. Thanks for watching.